Welcome to Wine Soundtrack Canada. Listen to the passion with which producers narrate their winery and their world. In 30 Answers, discover their stories, personalities, and passions. Hello, friends and listeners of Wine Soundtrack Canada. It is none other than Christine Campbell, and today I have the pleasure of sitting with Lindsay Schatz at the Vancouver Convention Centre during Vancouver International Wine Festival. And Lindsay is the winemaker from Time Family of Wines. Welcome, Lindsay. Can you please tell the listeners and I a little bit about Time Family of Wines? Sure. So Time Family of Wines carries four different brands underneath it. First one is Evolve, then we move to Kronos, after that is Time, and then the McWaters Collection. And we are in downtown Penticton in the Okanagan Valley. And we actually are in an old theater that we can uh, change into a winery. And we also have a site at the District Wine Village in Oliver. And for those people that don't know Penticton and Oliver, what is the drive distance time-wise between the two? Oh, about 40 minutes between the two of them. Yeah. And the district is a new development. Uh, Can you maybe talk to the concept of what is the district? Yeah, so the wine district is actually the first of its kind. It's a little bit like a co-op where there's equipment that's shared between the uh, different wineries that are in there. And they're just small little satellite wineries. It's actually built in a circle and there's this really nice sense of community there. And we use it um, as, you know, a bigger kind of footprint because we only have a city block in downtown Penticton so it's an opportunity for us to make a little bit more wine there. Do you have, do you own acres of vineyard land? Yes we do so you don't see it us being an urban winery but we do have about 10 acres in Soyuz so that's pretty exciting for us. Yeah as a urban winery people would potentially think that you don't have any estate Uh, vineyard land so that's lovely to hear how many cases a year do you produce you've got four tiers so that sounds like a heck of a lot how many cases ballpark or do you know specifically that do you do annually yep so we're doing about 14,000 cases a year it's quite a bit so that kind of puts us in the medium size winery for the Okanagan Valley And what type of wines are you known for across the four labels? Maybe a go-to wine per label would be an interesting thing for you to to talk to? Yeah, for sure. So in our Evolve lineup, we are well known for our sparkling wines in there. And that's actually, you know, kind of the case across all of the brands, I would say. But definitely the white and the pink effervescence for Evolve are are pretty popular wines. Uh, Moving into the time, I would say that our time brute, um, like I mentioned before about the sparkling and then from there probably the Syrah and the Cab Franc, those are some pretty popular red wines for that brand. In the Kronos, that's our little bit more adventurous lineup. So we have uh, a Sauv Blanc in there and a Semillon in there and the Sem is becoming a lot more popular. There's not a lot grown around here so people are getting curious and reaching for that bottle. And then in our um, McWaters label, it's definitely the Red Meritage. And where are your markets? Who are who are buying uh, Time Family of Wine wines? Yeah, so with all of the different brands that we have, we're actually, um, uh, you know, appealing to lots of different styles of drinkers. So I'd, I'd say that we're kind of all over the, the market in a way. Great answer, because you have all of the different SKUs to deliver everything that anyone would ever want. That's fantastic. Lindsay, what is your first memory relevant to wine? Well, I started at a winery in Kelowna when I was not even uh, legal drinking age. So I was working in the cellar and I was hand labeling sparkling wine bottles. And from there, I was just kind of looking around and being like, what's going on here? You know, I was only hired to do that one job, but I was pretty curious about what all the cellar hands and the winemakers were doing around me. And that's kind of how I started and sparked the interest. And what is the first or most memorable wine that you ever tasted and what was the occasion uh there's a lot it's really hard to pick (laughs) one uh when i was in ontario actually uh doing a harvest out there 
um, the owner of the winery let us um, come over, invited us over to his house and opened a bottle of wine from the year that we were all born. Oh. So that was pretty special. And then I think the second to that would be in Australia, I drink a pretty old a 1970s Riesling, which was really interesting as well. This farm had found um, a bunch of bottles actually buried underneath the shed in their backyard. They'd been farming there for about 150 years and they found some and I just happened to be there when they'd opened that. So that was pretty special too. Talk about being at the right place at the right time, both, both times. Huh, okay, well, you got me beat. I, I love those answers. Traveling the world abroad, and it sounds like you have traveled, which is the best foreign wine you've ever enjoyed? Hmm. I, I know, it's a big, it's a big question yeah. because the world is large. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to think about it. Um, so, there'd be a couple, I guess, but um, maybe I haven't traveled to those places, but wines that I like from there, so definitely Champagne from France. Something that has some age on it is, you know, always, always something that makes me weak in the knees. Uh, Beaujolais, love Beaujolais. Um, it's always reaching for those kinds of lighter red style wines. But as far as something I've, you know, maybe been there, probably in the Yarra Valley, they made some cool, cool climate Shiraz. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed those wines. I still have to get to Australia. It's on my list. Okay, here's a fun one. Amongst all the world populations, what country do you think drinks the best in terms of quality? Oh my goodness. It's so hard with wine because everybody's palate is so different. And um, I hesitate to answer questions like that because then you know, people think that if they don't like that, maybe they're not drinking well. So it's more about, do you think... For example, the United States drinks the best quality wine across the world, or is it the French or Italians, or is there kind of a country that you would just snap, like knee-jerk reaction, like, ooh, I think that they know what they're doing? Uh, yeah, I would say Australia then, and maybe it's because it has, you know, this soft spot in my heart from all the time that I spent there, but there's a lot of quality, you know, wines coming out of Australia all over. Which wines from your personal cellar, either personal in your home or personal from time family of wines, are currently giving you the most satisfa satisfaction? Um, what am I reaching for? Um, I think recently I did a little wine touring and I collected some aged sparklings and uh, had a 2012 Blanc de Blanc the other day and it was fantastic. I want to know more about that. Is this from BC? Were they BC sparkles or are these sh champagnes that had age? Yeah, it uh, was a sparkling wine made in Kelowna at Summerhill actually and it was delicious, yeah. Summerhill is an incredible uh, destination for anybody coming to BC. Okay, Lindsay, do you believe in a perfect variety? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, no. I think that everyone has their favorites and favorites that they like to grow and that they like to work with. But I don't think that there's a favorite for me. You know, all different styles of grapes and wines offer so many different things. I think it definitely depends on what you're doing and who you're with and how you're feeling that day. <laughs> It really is about feel. So pretend I'm not one of these. What is your opinion of wine critics and wine scores? Yeah, I think it's important as a tool to help educate people. I think that it can't just be that one line drawn in the sand. I think that people also still need to go out and form their own opinions, but I think it's a good way to kind of start. Getting down to wine, for you as a consumer, Lindsay, do you tend to reach for whites, reds, or rosés more than anything? Well, you missed bubbles, so... No, that's my second question. <laughs> Look at you jumping ahead, Wine Soundtrack Canada listeners. Somebody's, somebody is thinking ahead. Uh, definitely whites then. Yeah, something nice and refreshing. Okay. <laughs> Still or sparkling? Yes, <laughs> sparkling for sure every time. Yeah, <laughs> It's like you're in my head, ready. Regarding sparkling wines though, do you, do you prefer champagne 
over everything else or does something else um, give you what you're looking for? Depends what I'm doing, I suppose. So um, I think more often than not, it's going to be those kind of developed sparkling wines. But, you know, there's definitely a time and place for those more fruit driven sparkling wines as well. So a mix of both, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. So this is a, a fun question. Sometimes people like it, sometimes people don't. But have you ever paired white wine with red meat or red wine with fish? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Why not? You know, yep. I. Do you agree that rules like that should be thrown out the window? No, no. I think that, like, a pairing is a pairing and there's certain things that work together, but... If you're working on a glass of white and your steak comes, you can finish it and have a bite of steak and it's going to be okay. (laughs) I like your style. So if you've ever had that, you know, we might have all been there, that one extra glass of wine that maybe you shouldn't have, do you have a cure for a hangover that you might like to share with the listeners? Uh, Just pretend that it's not there. Just (laughs) just keep going. Just ignore it and somehow it just kind of goes away. (laughs) Ah, fantastic answer. What does a non-drinker lose out on by not tasting your wine? Well, the first thing would be cheersing because having bubbles, it's an automatic thing. People most often will, you'll pour it and then they'll just want to cheers right away. It's always kind of, you know, goes hand in hand together. Um, but maybe yeah, just that sensory perception and um, you know just being able to use your your smell and your taste together and the pairings like we talked about and I think just the experience of being able to sit together and enjoy a nicely made wine. Each vintage tells a different story or not. Are there things more that repeat themselves or is it becoming more and more the opposite? I mean, I think it's I think it's both. There's certainly things during harvest that are the same, where you're receiving grapes, sorting them, loading presses. That's always going to happen. Um, and you know, weather shifts, but for the most part, we can count on it being a certain way. So, yeah, there's things that are really different. You know, forest fires. Uh, you know, that can happen, and that's awful. And sometimes they're farther away, and sometimes they're closer. So, yeah, there's definitely things both ways I would say yeah do you have any personal good luck rituals for when harvest is about to start oh I see a smile there so I always talk to the yeast so (laughs) to the yeast yeah yeah yeah. so it's not before harvest starts it's after harvest is started and we're getting these ferments going and I always ask them to um, do a good job and I wish them luck and I actually uh, make all my cellar hands do the same thing too and they actually get quite into it because they're you know the yeast are alive so we're sending them off nicely oh that goes right into my neck I swear to god you've got ESP or something I've learned that some producers walk in the cellars and speak to the wine in the barrel Um, Do you do that? Do you speak to the wine? I know you speak to the yeast. And if so, yes, what do you say? And or do you speak to the vines in the vineyard? Yeah, I don't talk to the wines, really. I'm trying to think if I've ever stopped and talked to them. Um, No, not really. I, like, you know, think some good thoughts for them. But probably more in the vineyard, you'd talk to the vines and... Um, encourage them along the way. You spend a lot of time alone in a vineyard walking through sampling grapes, so you um, you know can get a little bit lonely and have a bit of a conversation with them and encourage them along. But um, yeah, I, I just talk to the yeast usually. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could actually hear back from the vines and what they wanted and <laughs> what they were going to give us? Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Lindsay, when you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, I wanted to be a race car driver. <laughs> I loved playing with little toy cars, and I had the car mat, and um, loved driving. What's a car mat? It's like a you know a mat that has a road mapped out on it, and so you'd have to move the car along the along the road. <laughs> Do you drive fast now? No, I'm actually like a grandma driver. I drive really slow. <laughs> when you're not working, how do you spend your free time? Oh. Um, 
Well, we live in Summerland, and we're right back onto a mountain, so we're always up the mountain with our dog, and if we're not up there, um, we're on the boat in the summertime. The Okanagan Lake is huge, and it just kind of makes sense to have a boat when you live there, so spending a lot of time on the boat or in our backyard having a fire, cooking. Do you do any sport in particular? Uh, I used to play field hockey, but mostly we bike now. We have a little bike cart for our dog, so we pull him along with us and <laughs> take him around. What's your dog's name? Hudson. Oh, good name. Who is your favorite singer over time or currently? And if it's not a singer, what is the group that you are always kind of going back to or currently on your rotation? Mm, um... I feel like other people could answer this better for me. <laughs> um, what is a go-to for me? I like pop music. I think it um, makes you feel happy and it's nice to dance around. And I also really like singer-songwriter music, um, some kind of emotional, sad country songs. Uh, I don't know. I can't pick just one artist. Or a couple, a group, a couple of artists or groups or individual singers. It's always fun to know recommendations. I'm going to embarrass myself saying this, but I really like Katy Perry, so I listen to her from time to time and um, actually saw her in concert once. So um, did I. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> that makes me feel better. Um, bon Iver, Arcade Fire, a um, little bit of hip-hop in there too, but yeah. Do you have a favorite film dedicated to wine? No. No, I don't. But my favorite movie is The Princess Bride. <laughs> I like the pivot there, and I think they had wine in The Princess Bride. I think there's definitely wine in there. Good, good pivot. I like it. For a romantic evening, what wine would you order first to kick off your evening? Uh, a bottle of bubbles. This is a reoccurring <laughs> answer throughout this. Um, yeah, bottle of aged bubbles. It'd probably have to be a bit of a argument with my boyfriend Ricky about that because he kind of likes the uh, fruitier ones and I like the more aged ones but I would probably win. <laughs> of course you'd win. Of course you'd win. Are you a supporter of any sports teams? Yeah definitely. I love watching live sports and love the energy of going to actual live sports so the Canucks for sure that's a big one for us. Vancouver Canucks? Yes Vancouver Canucks. And if they won the Stanley Cup what bottle of wine from Time Family of Wines would you try to get to the dressing room and congratulate the, the guys with? Uh, we would bring a couple bottles of the Mick Waters traditional method brew. That's what I was hoping you were going to say. <laughs> what is the best piece of advice you have ever received? Um, best piece of advice? Uh, I think there'll be some good days and there'll be some bad days. My mom told me that. And isn't that the truth? <laughs> Do you have any advice to give the listeners about life in general, about wine, about wine tasting, appreciation? Yeah, I think just keep an open mind and keep adventuring and um, find something you like and go back to that, learn from that, as far as wine goes. <laughs> yeah. What is the proudest achievement in your work thus far? Um, for winemaking, I think just um, the tonnage that I pull in every year and with such a small team. So we are doing, you know, over 200 tons every year across four different brands and logistically it's quite crazy so yeah it always feels like a, a great accomplishment once we get all the those grapes in massive i can only imagine <laughs> like make it end <laughs> make it end but we did it Lindsay, can you complete the following sentence a table without wine is like a shoe without laces Ooh, love that love that love that yay Maybe my favorite answer so far. <laughs> what sort of wines do you think will be enjoyed in 2,300? Oh my 
goodness, I hope the same styles. You know, I hope that we're still consistently doing the same things. Maybe we've just leveled up a bit or found easier ways to do certain things. But yeah, I'm hoping that we're still doing much the same. And do you think we're still going to be drinking wine in 2,000 years' time from now? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> it, would, uh, it would be a shame for them to miss out on this. Name three wines, and it can be the variety or the style, that you would take to either a deserted island or out into outer space. You get to pick where you go, but you only get three bottles to choose. So I would take a Chardonnay, and I would take a Rosé, something really nice and fruity and fresh, uh, and then I would take a light red, maybe a Gamay or a Pinot Noir. What is one winemaking area in the world that you have not yet, but would like to explore? I have never been to Europe anywhere, so uh, that's where I would start for sure. One country in particular? Ah, uh, France first, yep. And would you head right to Champagne? Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not finished yet, Lindsay. It's now time to play a little game. I'm going to pick a few different wine varieties, and I want you to tell me what song you would pair with that wine. If you can't come up with an actual song, then you can thro throw out a genre. This is the wine soundtrack, so we do have to have some music in here, right? We've already kind of dabbled a little bit with Katy Perry, but that's cool. So I'm going to start at the beginning, for me, from what you said, and that is Chardonnay. Uh, Whitney Houston. Didn't even skip a beat. I like that. Okay, I'm going to say Syrah. I would say Black Eyed Peas. How come? That's fun. It's kind of funky, and you know, there's a, some vibrance to Syrah, so I think it works. Great answer. Okay, final variety for you. Hmm. I'm going to say Gamay. Mm, Gamay would be. Uh, who? Who can we put to Gamay? I feel like there's a couple different directions we could go here. Go in a couple. Um, I can't pick one, but I would say some kind of like uh, dusty singer-songwriter kind of style music. Yeah, that would be it. A, like country and western kind of, or? Um, sure. Yeah, we could do that. We could, <laughs> we could go there with that, or or um, like a Bonnie Bear kind of style music or something. You know, something kind of cross country, a bit rugged. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic answers. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us today on Wine Soundtrack Canada. Can you please remind our listeners where we can find your wines? So we are located in downtown Penticton, so you can come visit us there. And you can also come visit us at the District Wine Village. And there are... I'm, I can't list all of them because there's no time, but you can find the wine in a lot of different restaurants and liquor stores around British Columbia. How about across Canada? Yeah, there's a couple sites across Canada and we're just working on kind of filling a couple, you know, more stores in that area as well. Do you ship internationally? I don't think so at the moment, but um, yeah, we're working towards all of those things. And your tasting room, both, both locations are open for all of the wine tourists coming up for the season? Yep, every day. And what is your social uh, website address, please? So we are timewines.ca. And social media? Uh, so we have a couple, so that there's at Evolve Cellars and at Time Wines, and at Time Wines is for both Kronos and McWaters. Lindsay, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me today on Wine Soundtrack Canada. Um, any last words for the listeners? No, just thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Thanks for listening to a new episode of Wine Soundtrack Canada. For details and updates, visit our website, winesoundtrack.com.